When it comes to editing photos, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's just an expression. Anyway, in this video, I wanna share with you a really easy way that we can make impactful black and whites. For sure, I've shown many different ways in the past where we can tweak our black and whites to fine tune them. But in this one, I'm gonna show you how we can make great black and whites imbued with a lot of character with just two tools. Let's get into it. So the photo I have in front of me, as I show before and an after, I've managed to turn that into a punchy looking black and white effect with just these two tools here, and I'm gonna show you how you can do the same. It's really easy. Okay, as I scroll up here, you can see here's a couple of photos that I've already had a play around with, and you'll notice one thing. We have nice black and white, but we also have a subtle hint of color. So how am I doing that? Well, let's find a photo that we like. Let's just go with this one right here. And we're just gonna jump into the edit section. So there are many great tools inside Luminar Neo for working with black and white. But for our intents and purposes here, we are just gonna use the mood tool, which applies a lookup table or a LUT to our photo. So for example, we can come in, we can put some Anaheim, Bakersfield, Long Beach. They all create really nice color effects that help to tone our image. So how's that gonna help us with our black and white? Well, let's say we wanna go with Bakersfield for now. The default amount is 30, but if we start pushing this up so that we can actually clearly see what's going on, now we have 100% of the Bakersfield lookup table applied. And while you don't need to know what a lookup table is, let me just briefly explain what it's doing here. In effect, it's taking color information from an individual pixel and it's remapping that existing initial color to a new value. That's why these colors are shifting and it comes from the movie industry. These lookup tables, they're extremely powerful. And one of the things I love in true Luminar Neo style is it's taken a very complex and powerful tool and simplified it for us. We don't actually need to know anything about these complex computational 3D lookup tables that are being applied to actually benefit from them. There's just a couple of really simple sliders in here that are really gonna help us elevate the quality of our black and whites. So the first one is contrast. If I push this up, obviously we're getting a much more contrasty image, and if I reduce it, we're reducing the contrast. So how is this gonna help us with a black and white? Well, if I grab the saturation slider, I can of course increase that saturation and push more color into those color values or I can pull the color away. But as you can see, we're not creating a black and white image as yet, we're merely tinting a grayscale image. But there's one more step we wanna do. So let's pull the contrast back up so we have a little more interest in our image. We're gonna close the mood tool down. So literally we have one tool applied. This is our original photo and this is with the mood tool applied with the Bakersfield effect. We can change that to any LUT we like. So we could, for example, go for Long Beach if we wanted. Any of these cinematic tonings work great. But for now, let's go with Long Beach. I quite like the look of that one. And now we're just gonna add one more tool on top of that. And it's a really simple tool. It is the color tool from the Essentials selection. <laughs> it's not the Essentials selection, that's something different. Pete Tong Dance Radio 1. No, this is the color tool inside the Essentials tools. So this allows us just to grab the saturation slider and bring that down. And now if I take that all the way to minus 100, you can see that straight away we've created just a pure black and white image. But the thing I love about this particular technique is we can reintroduce some of that color toning that we had through the mood tool. So if we set that at minus 42, you can see that we've taken this image here and created a nice high contrast sepia toned image. So we can jump back into the edit section if we want and play around and choose a different mood tool. The portrait toning options give us more of a uniform color across our whole image. So let's say we wanted a kind of yellowy tint to this, then we just jump back up to the color tool and grab the saturation slider. And for this one, we'd probably wanna bring that down a little more. So before and after, the options in the creative toning also give us some really nice black and white effects. And as you can see, the actual look of the black and white, if you just disregard the color information itself, the black and white looks quite different between these options. So for example, if we wanted to go for red trace, usually that just intensifies the red color if we bring the saturation up. But if we just forget the red color itself altogether, we might just wanna go with this as our black and white conversion. So here's our before 
Here's our after, simply by applying red trace without any saturation. But one of the things I really love about this technique is that we can imbue our black and white photo with just a nice subtle hint of a color, sometimes two. So let's find another option that introduces a nice color combo. How about we go for LA, Los Angeles, let's go for that. Now we don't have to have the contrast set where I put it. That's one of the really nice things about this technique is we can play around with that. So we could go for a less contrasty image if that's what we want, but I'm quite enjoying more contrast in a black and white photo. So let's go with that. That's not our final look though, because of course we want to control the saturation. Putting the saturation at zero gives us exactly what the mood tool was doing, but we just wanna drop back that saturation to the point where we feel it's a nicer, more subtle edit. So here's our original color photo, and here's our edit with just two simple tools applied. Now I really love the effect we can get from this two tool combo I've come up with. So what I'd recommend you do if you want to apply this to a batch of photos, it's best to save this as a preset. So let's do that now. So to save this as a preset, we just come down to the bottom left here to actions and go save as preset. And I'll call that black and white Los Angeles. So now we can apply that to any photo we want. So now from the catalog section, if I wanted to apply that same look to these photos here, we could just come into the presets and just select black and white Los Angeles. And there we go, that's applied. Okay, let's grab a brand new photo to work on. And it's normally a good idea when you're actually creating a look that you wanna apply and work across the board for lots of different photos. One that has a fair bit of color in, different colors, is a good idea to build the preset around because it will give you a good idea of what happens for the greens, yellows, reds, and the blues as well. So let's work on this one here. And currently we have no adjustments whatsoever. So what you can do is combine this technique that I'm showing you here with a more refined edited photo. But this is just showing you what you can do just with these two tools alone. So let's come into the cinematic toning and let's just select Palm Springs. It doesn't really matter which one we're selecting to start with. We just wanna give these a little bit of a move around so it starts to give us an idea of what it will look like as a black and white. So we drop the saturation so we can see what's going on. And I'm not really digging this purple look, so let's have a look for something else. I quite like the tones in the wooden look, and some of these are quite nice as well. Smoky is similar to wooden, uh, but it's a little bit more punchy. Um, we even have sepia, and some of these in the creative tab don't actually introduce any color themselves, they're purely just working on a black and white basis. So what I'd recommend doing is just choose one that does have that little bit of color in it for this particular technique. And now we can work with that contrast slider. I am gonna push that quite high for this one. And now all we need to do is add that color tool, which allows us just to desaturate that effect if we want to. So if we take that away completely, we've got pure black and white, but that saturation slider just allows us to introduce a little bit of the color that exists in that lookup table. Something like that's quite nice. And now if we jump to the catalog and you actually want to synchronize this look throughout a set of photos, and I would recommend that if you are creating a body of work or collection of photos that you're housing in one place, whether that's a book, online, Facebook, wherever you're gonna be publishing your work, stick to a consistent look. Don't mix and match the looks because it does look very amateurish. By all means, experiment with different styles, different looks, different types of processing. You know, that's part of the fun, but I wouldn't recommend putting them in the same collection because it just looks really disjointed. So in this case, what we're gonna do is synchronize this particular look we've created across the whole set of photos. Let me show you how we do that. So I currently have very large thumbnails showing, so I'm gonna to go to medium so we can see more of our photos. And all we need to do is scroll to a place where we decide that's the end of this series. So let's say here, and we hold shift and click on that last photo. That's gonna select all of these photos in this range. And now all I'm gonna do is right click or option click on a Mac, come to adjustments and sync adjustments. So as soon as I click this, Luminar Neo is going to work, going through these photos, applying this effect. And as you can see, the black and white that we've created is working really nicely through all of these images. I really like it. So there you go, impactful black and whites with just two tools. And this is one of the things I really love about Luminar Neo, the fact that we can 
play with the tool structure, put them in different orders, reapply tools. It just opens up a whole world of creativity that other photo editors just don't allow. So I really like that. If you guys don't have Luminar Neo yet, I've got a link in the description. They're currently running a huge sale, 82% off of the normal cost. And I also have a discount code, which allows a further 20% off. It's only running for just over a week, I think, from when this video will post. So if you want to get hold of that, renew subscriptions, dive into that right now, guys. Do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this quick tip. And if you'd like more videos where I just share quick little tips like this as well. Um, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to check on my cat and make sure it's not too disturbed by earlier. Bye bye for now.